what's important to remember about mixing colors, not that difficult when you know the science of it. There is, there is a lot about painting that is pure science and color is certainly one of those things. So what I hope to do in these next five lessons is to um, show you something of the science of color, show you how to use the science of color in order to, to read and then mix the color that you're looking at. What do we mean by reading color? We mean that when we look at it, we know its volume, its hue, its intensity, and its temperature. Now, what do we need to study the value of color? Uh, one thing that is very, very, will be very, very helpful to you in doing this lesson along with me is if you haven't done so already, go to the site, uh, to the e-store, and download, go uh, cursor down to the uh, video supplement area, download free this little uh, three view isolator. This is a little tool that I've put together to enable uh, studying value and uh, actually studying value and hue, but it's more it's more helpful in studying value. So uh, do that. It's got instructions included with it as to how to um, how to use it, how to print it, how to use it. Um, so if you haven't already done that, go ahead and do it before you finish uh, or before you go ahead with the video. Just put it on pause and go do that right now. Those two colors are black and white. Ivory black, and of course I'm using here my uh, my Utrecht ivory black and titanium white. This titanium white happens to be a Gamblin uh, titanium white. Not that it matters cause, because uh, most titanium whites and ivory blacks are pretty much the same no matter what brand but that, those just happen to be the brand that I'm using. Here we have a fun, fun, funny thing right here. We have part in shadow, part not in shadow. This is kind of a little transition that comes down through there. If you look right in there, you'll see that. And then, of course, on the grass right in here, we have a shadow. We need, on the palette, we need at least three value areas. We need to have the darkest dark, the lightest light, and we need the middle which would be, I always consider to be about value five. Uh, if I put the value scale, my value scale here, uh, this is mid-range right here. This is, the, this is the range where things fall either out of shadow or into shadow. That's kind of the transition range. Now, here's what I want to do. Because I'm seeing a little bit of light, uh, there's a little light reflecting off her muzzle right there and it gradates down and I'm seeing a little bit of light reflect I'm going back into the this is value, it's about value 2 a little bit of light reflecting right in there if we're using if we need an aid to tell us exactly what happens in these sometimes you look at color and you're maybe not quite sure what it is you can use this little color mate I've made for you and uh, say let's go back to this yellow you might say, well, well, maybe it's supposed to be an orange ball. Uh, you might go back to that and, and, and not be quite sure what you're seeing in the shadow. Well, let's look. If we hold this up um, uh, between us and the subject we're looking at, look through the color, uh, the color section, the hole in the color section, close one eye and slightly squint the other, then you'll be able to see the color and know what color you're actually looking at and watch what happens here. This is in, it's becoming more yellow-orange. See there? Yellow-orange. Now as I move it around, I move it to it. Look at that. It changed. Now it's more yellow. Not exactly, a, a, not exactly a, a bright yellow like we see here, but we can see it is more yellow. Then let's push it back into the yellow-orange here. And let's bring it down and watch what's happening. It's changing. Is changing into more of towards orange, becoming more towards orange, and we pull it on down. Look, it's changed again. It's not red necessarily, or that's red orange, not red there necessarily, but begins to be feel a little bit more like maybe purple with something else in it. All right, what it, remember what I said? The 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 local color, which is red is going to reflect back at you some of its complement. So that means we need to add a little bit of green in there. Now we could do that with Viridian. Uh, here's a little bit of Viridian. It won't be much. 
if you overdo that, it um, it really will will look overdone. So uh, I'm going to take just a little bit of iridium here and ease that in. Just ease that in right in here. And let's see what happens. That give, begins to give us that richer, richer color. That all of that's still transparent, and uh, uh, and that that would be okay. Except that I'm seeing, I'm feeling not quite so much transparent there. I'm feeling a little bit more of a, an opaque quality. So what is intensity? Intensity is the saturation of hue. What do we mean by saturation of hue? Well, here we go. In this particular wheel, I have given the saturation of hue, which is the strongest hue uh, that you'll find in any color. And then I've shown how it decreases gradually as it gets less and less intense. This is intensity. This is the degree of intensity. The highest intensity is the highest saturation. The lowest intensity is the lowest saturation. I've already done the preliminary sketch for the cow. First thing I want to do before I begin with go uh, into anything else, I want to develop the notan. Uh, the notan is always important when doing any kind of study because the one thing you need to uh, establish in the beginning is where are the shadows, where are the lights. All right, so the intensity then remains the same, but the value gets a little lighter right in here. So you you can see now why it was necessary for us to uh, study value, reading value first and reading hue second and then learning to read intensity because without knowing how to read value and hue reading intensity becomes a problem. Here's a little chart I created for you. Uh, the local color, and this, if we were standing there uh, we would not see um, with our bare eyes wide open unless we were trained to see it. We wouldn't see the difference in the grass as the camera is showing. The same difference as the camera is showing. Uh, but we would kind of just read it as grass. And people say grass green. Alright, so grass green. But there are lots of different things going on in that green that cause you to see what you're seeing. I have I've developed this wheel to sort of um, isolate the sections of the color wheel into warm and cool because this is the way the the spectrum works one side or one yeah one side being cool and the other side being warm and then we have these two little colors right here that kind of sit on the sit on the fence and whether they are cool or warm depends on the color they sit beside now I'm going to move into the blue, the, the dark blue within that cap, within that alizarin crimson that is in that darkest color. I'm moving into the dark blue right here to help influence the temperature of that color. Just a little bit more. And it's going to do that slowly here so you can see that kind of transform. But you might just uh, start out with just a, a palette of tertiary colors. For example, notice here, uh, I, I have started out, I started out with just the red, orange, and the blue, green. That is a good way to begin a study. You could choose any two, three, or four, no more than four, because then it starts to get muddy. But you could choose any two, three, or four tertiary colors to do, uh, to use as your palette. This one is about temperature about reading and interpreting or controlling temperature. Temperature is simply the color of light. It's a, you can just imagine that your light has a certain filter over it and all the colors that you're looking at are affected by that filter. Your job as an artist is to read that and then control it in your painting.